Charlie Langton here. Good All morning. Right. Good morning. Yes. <laughs> Good to see you, Charlie. Charlie. Uh, we've got a lot to cover with you, but we want to start with just this heartbreaking mm. story out of Detroit. And unfortunately, not the first time we've heard of this happening, but a baby recovering after being shot twice by the six-year-old sibling. So I know that you have been very involved with this story, difficult story. Um, yeah. But, and talking to family members too. Yeah, I talked to the father who his one-year-old child is now back to just probably, well, maybe still in surgery right now. Apparently the one-year-old was shot twice, one in the, like the cheek and the bullet, according to the father, is still stuck in the child's mm. face. Uh -huh. And they had to do a surgery to get that out. The child was also hit in the left shoulder. And I understand, however, despite those terrible sounding injuries, the child is in stable condition at this point. But but that's the condition of the one-year-old. Now, the six-year-old uh, is a cousin of uh, the of the one-year-old, okay, and they so were not living siblings, there. Cousin, not a sibling. It was okay. a cousin. It was a cousin, and Dad tells me that uh, he was out in the yard about 7:30, 7:45 yesterday night. He hears a shot, hears another shot, and goes in. He says that the gun, which was his, and he says it was properly registered, he says it was in a safe under his bed, and that the six-year-old found the gun, got it, and shot the cousin. Mm. Now, police are investigating. The dad is not in custody. Talked to me this morning. Um, obviously very concerned. It's a terrible situation when kids are there. Was the gun properly locked up? Was it properly kept away from children? I understand there were some other sibling, other uh, younger kids in that house at the time. Um, that's what the police are going to be investigating. With so. the investigation, do could possible charges come? If so, what could those charges be for not having the gun, uh, well, secured or whatever the charges may be charged? Well, it could. I mean, it could be a child neglect situation. If you have a loaded gun, mm -hmm. I can see that as a possible charge. Haven't we seen that in the past? Yeah, well, Kim Worthy has been signed, aggressive they, in they, prosecuting yeah. these cases, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, they just signed a new law where it mandates a gun owner to have the gun locked up if you have minor children in your mm -hmm. house. Now, I don't know. I was trying to find out when that law took effect. Mm. I don't think it's in effect at the moment, but it's been signed by the governor, so it is a law. Now, how likely if they want to bring, and I'm not saying they're going to bring charges. I mean, the dad had a safe. It was under the bed, not in, if, assuming all that's true, not in plain view of anybody. That might be enough to not bring charges. A, a six-year-old is a six-year-old. Can they get into things? Yes. It's a tough one. Yeah. Wow. It's a tough one. How is the dad's uh, mental state? Not good. Dad is an honest guy. He works. He feels terrible about mm. this. Dad is a dad's a good guy, mm. and he said, "I did. I thought I had the gun secure." Mm. And I, you mm. know, again, it's it's one of these terrible situations. Is it preventable? Yeah, but you know, the issue is going to be if there's. And I'm not saying there's going to be charges, but how far do you have to go to prevent a child from getting a gun? And maybe you do have to go more than maybe what this dad does. It's up to the. First of all, the police will investigate. If the police believe there's a charge, they'll bring it to the prosecutor to determine exactly mm. what charge. Child neglect, uh, maybe some lock law. I, although endangerment, we'll anything like that? Be endangerment, yeah. yeah, something along those lines. Or no charges. Or we, or charges. No. Wow. Do we know how wow. the six-year-old is doing right now? I asked. It was a cousin, the uh, the mother. They're, they're, they're separated. And uh, Dad told me, too, he can't go to the hospital because to see his kid in in surgery because there's still an ongoing investigation. Yeah, it's tough. Really that is tough. It's a very tough, this oh, is a God. sad, sad, if, if this doesn't get the message out, if you have a gun, just lock it and keep it away from kids. Mm -hmm. I would say this is the, unfortunately, the situation to do it. These are all, it's mm. just, it's just a terrible situation. Very lucky that kid is still alive. Mm. Extremely lucky. And dad, yeah. and dad feels it too. You, you, wow. you, you can just tell. Wow. Oh, you can just tell. A one year old. One year old boy. That's just uh, that's hard okay. on everybody. Yeah. Um, okay. Do we want to take a quick break? Yeah. Um, real quick. Do it. Let's just talk about what happened at East Point yesterday. Yeah. Um, there was a, a threat, uh, and there was a police presence. Yeah. Big. So we get a, we get a call. We get a call in the afternoon. Uh, there is a possible uh, child, a student with a weapon. Now, that was what we were told. When we got there, we got word that there may have been a loaded magazine found in the school. It turns out there was a magazine, but it was from an air gun, mm. which is 
it's probably not supposed to bring it to school, but it's not a weapon like a gun. But that was after the fact. So there was a lockdown. All of the students, there's 490 students at the East Point High School right on Gratiot near Nine Mile. They were in their classroom. And then the police, many police, not only East Point's a smaller community, Warren and Roseville and Hazel yeah, Park, right. they all came out, yep. especially Warren. And they, um, they went through every single classroom. They went on the roof. They did a very thorough search. They didn't find anything. Mm. Charlie, so. we're talking about East Point, Warren, Harper Woods, three this week. I know. I know. Don't bring, don't, and, 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 and this started because of a social media threat. The cops were happy to be at the school for another incident, turned, didn't turn out to be much. But then someone apparently called the school and said, I've got a, a, an Instagram video of a kid in the bathroom with a gun. Wow. But it was from, so, now I, so was, that a, right. uh, was that a fraudulent threat? Or that's what the cops are looking at today. They're trying to, to find out, out who mm. made the call and who made the video. Yeah. Wow. So that's, it's, that crazy, is not man. done yet. It's just mm. crazy. Don't bring a gun to school. Don't make a threat. Um, and look at, at that, that whole day. And a lot of the parents now are really, they're afraid for their kids. Yeah. School's almost done. Yeah, it's only a week left. I Keep know. them home, right? That's what somebody, some parents probably that. will do that. I saw that, yeah. that interview that you did. I know, yeah. Yeah, I know. Wow. All right, let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we want to talk to you about using the cell phone while you're driving. Oh. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, okay. uh, no. Yeah. All right, uh, Governor Griffin Whitmer signing a new distracted driving bill into law. Meaning you can no longer, when this kicks in, which will be soon, but you can no longer drive like this. Can't do it. Hello, how you doing? How nope, you doing? None of that. Uh, but of course, and some seri really serious consequences that we've seen with people texting and driving and other distracted things. And so this puts an end to it, maybe. What did I see? That? I think the uh, state cops put out there were 2,700 crashes and 21 deaths in 2021. So I think there, I think everyone kind of can agree that there is a relationship between being on your phone and getting into a crash mm -hmm. and deaths, unfortunately. So yes. So the legislature did what they did. They banned driving with a phone and the governor signed it. So what does it mean? Um, it is not a, uh, it's, it's a, it's a civil infraction, really. First offense, $100, second, $250. Uh, or you can do community service if you can't pay. And if you get three in three years, you have to go to driver's training, that type of thing. So, um, How is this enforced, Charlie? Well, so, Because you would, if you get pulled over, you're going to throw that phone on the floor, right? So the state cops were pretty good. And, and some of the other county cops, they had these sting out. I call them sting out. They probably get mad at me for saying that. But they had these dual sting operation where one driver in an unmarked car... There'd be a driver and a cop in the passenger seat looking for people on the phone mm. or people putting on their makeup or any other form of distracted right. driving. And then the cop would radio the marked cop car to pull the bad driver over. And they do that every so often. They just did it not too long ago. In fact, we did a ride along about a year ago. Camera equipped they, cars? Do they have uh, camera everyone, evidence? I think everyone's got cameras probably All right, now. all right. But you've got a witness. I mean, you know, I have to say, it's hell, I'm a police officer, and I saw this guy. Right. With, your, like him. with naked eyes. You don't I mean, you see it. You so, I mean, it, you're, yeah. you, you yeah. could try to beat it, and you're not going to beat it. And um, you could get pulled over for just that. Yeah. Right. It, yeah. You don't have to be going mm -hmm. 80 and a 55, mm -hmm. and then, uh, you know, that is that is a reason to pull you over. This could yeah. really change my life. Uh, uh is eating I was also just distracted ask that. driving. I, I, I don't know if you know that one, but is it? I understand the law. It only applies to cell phones. It's a hand-free law. Now, does that mean you can't eat? You can't uh, drink coffee? I thought eating was part of it. I, I know. I don't shame know. on me for not looking I don't at know. that. But I should have looked that one up myself. I think it was cell phones too, because I did cell not phone. see the eating. But if eating is, uh, I'm going to get thrown in jail. Uh, because all I do is eat in my car. <laughs> That's where I eat. That's right. uh, you, well, know, you can pull in over between and eat. Jobs and I know all you're in a I get it. I know. You know I'm rushed into a movie. Yeah, I gotta right. eat. Right? I gotta eat. Gotta eat, man. Yeah. So, uh, I, I think, I think uh, there's also a catch-all called careless driving, uh, which is, I believe, it's a civil infraction three-point ticket. So it's expensive. But if you are eating and you're, you know, if you swerve a little bit. I would think you're going to be pulled. I really don't mean to make light of that so, right. because this, yeah. again, we, we mentioned this yes. in the nine o'clock hour. I mean, 21 deaths that were 100% preventable. Right. That you know, 100% preventable. Right. So, and, um, the, and the other thing is, it does not take that long to just pull over and take six minutes. Yeah. So here eat. is, this you're is according right. to Michigan.gov. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there are three main types of distraction, visual, 
taking your eyes off the road manual, taking your hands off the wheel or cognitive, taking your mind off the drive, yeah. uh, texting, checking social media, talking on the phone, yeah. uh, even hands free, watching videos, eating, drinking or smoking, grooming, Ooh, smoking. smoking, looking after mm. children or pets. Oh my so gosh. This is that's probably a, huge a very one. broad, this is probably very broad. Mm -hmm. Really what the focus on legally is, is texting and I think the focus is going to be texting because it's easy to see I yeah. mean uh, you know listen some people can make an argument billboards are distracted driving too mm -hmm. I mean the purpose of a billboard is to get your attention That's while true. you're driving right or some warning signs or some wow. exercise so I don't want to make any defenses here that are you know but but and, and maybe they'll ban billboards. I don't know. Maybe that's next. I'm not sure. If you're but, talking about you know. smoking, there's going to be a lot of upset people. They can't be ripping them darts, uh, <laughs> you know, ashing we, out the window. But we can't. Oh, make, we can't make light. Oh, don't get me started on that. <laughs> I don't think it's challengeable too much. I think it's going right. to be the law. I think if you get a ticket, you're going to have to pay. You got to pay it. Uh, let it rip tonight, Charlie. Uh, who will succeed Mike Duggan as mayor of oh. Detroit? Any thoughts on that? We'll be Ooh. discussing that. There's some rumors that he may not seek another term. Wow. He may want to run for another office. Oh, my. We'll talk about that coming up. And then would there be an alternative to a Biden-Trump rematch? An alternative? Of different people. Do we want to see different people? Is it time for new blood? I don't think, uh, I think that's a yes, <laughs> <laughs> I'm right. not stepping in that. Man. I'll leave that to you. Right. I'm not stepping well, in maybe we'll just right. accept that. Right. We don't need that. We don't even need that time right. up there. Yeah, get rid of that time. 330 million people in the I country. These are the one. two we got. Let's get out of here. We'll figure out something else. It'll be a surprise tonight. All right. Very good. Very good.